You've just got to come to the place where you throw up your hands and say, my case, so far as me doing something about it, my case is hopeless. But Jesus didn't say, come and I'll give you a better set of rules. Come and I'll just, you know, work, just look at me and just imitate me. Well, all you'll have if you do that is an imitation. God doesn't want imitations. He's looking to beget sons and daughters. And I'll tell you, that's what, he, that's what coming to Christ is all about. He has the power to give you life. You know, was it Carl who spoke, uh, somebody anyway, spoke about the, uh, the dead letter of the word. Thank God for this book. God inspired it, but he's the only one that can use it effectively to beget life in you. When he takes this word, breathes life, present tense into it, and all of a sudden it becomes personal. It becomes his invitation to you today, now, right now, to respond. Then you got something. And Jesus spoke one day to a religious crowd and he said, you, you search the scriptures. You think you're going to find life in the scriptures. You're very diligent about it. You're, you, you give all this people who gave all their lives to just pouring through the scriptures, turning the words every which way to try to de decipher the meaning so they could have life. He says, you search the scriptures in them. You think you have eternal life. You won't. And they're the ones that that's the word that testifies about me. Yes. And you won't come to me so you can have life. And so the Bible actually became a hindrance. The scriptures became a hindrance to people who did not understand what it was all about. God's word is meant to reach out to you, a lost, helpless, hopeless sinner, and call you to come and say, I turn it all over to you. Every issue of my life, beginning with the one that matters the most, and that's coming to God and having my sins wiped away. Oh, praise God. Does that bring rest? Yes. You know, you have the scripture. I'll just look at it quickly because I don't want to, you know, take up a lot of time with it. In fact, if I can think where it is. Hebrews 4. And this is the writer here who is talking to Jewish people. But he's talking about, again, the same issue. He's coming to rest because their whole mindset, their whole worldview is working to get righteous in God's eyes. But now he's saying, he, he refers back at the end of chapter 3 to people who could not enter in. Back in the days of the wilderness, they were not able to enter into the promised land because of what? Unbelief. It wasn't for lack of effort or this or that or the other. It was, it was unbelief in the promise of God that became the issue. Therefore, since the promise of doing what? Entering his rest still stands, let us be careful that none of you be found to have fallen short of it. I pray there's no one here today that's trying to be a Christian, but you've stopped short of turning your case completely into Jesus' hands. Put your whole soul upon him and his promise. You have no other hope but Jesus. If you haven't put your case and said, my only hope of being righteous in God's eyes is if you will take your sin, my sins upon you and give me your life and your righteousness. I quit trying. Lord, I believe your promise. That's all God's looking for. He's not looking for you to somehow work, work it up. Have you entered his rest? But there's a promise that you can. Don't fall short of it. Don't stop short of letting go and letting God have his way. For we also have had the gospel preached to us, just as they, the people in the wilderness, did. There was a promise of God then, there's a promise of God now. But what happened? But the message they heard was of no value to them. Why? Because those who heard it did not combine it with faith. They didn't believe it. They heard him all over and over again. Go in and possess the land. I've given you the land. The land is yours. Trust me, go. And they didn't believe it. They were more interested in, and more aware of the giants and the, and the obstacles that they were of the promise of God. So where are you at today? Have you heard the word of put, you know, put your faith in me, surrender your heart and trust, and trust in my provision for you? Have you ever really laid hold of that or is your heart still possessed by an unbelief and by holding back? Is there something in your life that you want more that you're not willing to let go? See, those who come to Christ is not just come here and I'll, you know, I'll dump rest in you. This is a really coming to him to embrace him for all that he is. He is God's provision, as has been said this morning, for every area of your life. You need 
You need his forgiveness. You need his strength. You need him to live in you. You need him to, to give you wisdom. You need him to teach you his ways. You need him for every single thing. You need him to take you all the way to the other side. You have no other hope, and I, I don't either. It's not my working to get there. It's my trusting in him. And so what effort I put, I put forth is an effort not of self-effort, but of faith. My faith is not in me and my ability to do it. My faith is in him. I have no faith in me. Zero. I have no hope the minute I begin to put my trust in me. Of course, that's what learning his ways is all about. Because by nature, we trust ourselves in so many ways, don't we? See, that's the ongoing process of learning, is, is unlearning this self-confidence and learning to say, all right, Lord, your way. What do you say about this? What's your plan? What's your will? I'm, I'm tired of trying it my way. Oh, my God. Think of what he's, done, what he's given to us and, and, and see it. See it for what it is. Instead of trying to, to be a Christian, instead of trying to do this and trying to do that, see that God has given you what you could never earn, never deserve, never attain by any effort of your own. He's given it to you. Will you just bow your heart and accept it and open it and say, Jesus, I confess you as my Savior and my Lord. I put my faith in you. I give up. I give it all up. It's yours. My life is yours. You'll never find rest any other way. You'll never, ha you'll never have that rest. So he says, they didn't, they didn't, there was no value to them, the message, because those who had heard did not combine it with faith. Now, we who have believed enter that rest. Get that. Not we who have become religious. Not we who have done this, who have done that, who have done the other. We who have believed. Do you believe? I don't mean just up here. I mean, do you believe with your heart and your life so that my life is in his hands now? It doesn't belong to me anymore. I have turned the whole deal over to him. There's no way that I can meet not only the issues of this life. That's, that's the minor stuff. Seek first his kingdom. You, you get that right, he'll begin to, he'll help you with all these other things that we've got to go through so temporarily down here. This is such a short time. He knows, he understands, he's been here, he knows all the deal, knows everything you and I will ever face. He will never leave you alone in any of it. That's his promise. He'll walk, th he'll walk through it with you. But he says, now we who have believed enter that rest. Just as God has said, so I declared on oath in my anger, they shall never enter my rest. And yet his work has been finished.